Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the after results, well, before and after, of some weed control sprays that I did using store-bought weed control called Image for Southern Lawns. Let's get into it. All right, y'all, time for me to spray some weeds. I've been talking about this for a while. I'm gonna do two things today. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spot spray. I'm just gonna use the store-bought Image for Southern Lawns. This is the one with the purple label. It's good for all warm season grass types, including grass, as well as, you know, Zoysia, Bermuda, St. Augustine, over by there. So I like this because actually this is exactly the same as a professional weed control that a lot of the spray businesses in your neighborhood are using. It's called Avenue South. And in fact, I did a video earlier this year where I break down, once you get this mixed into here, it's literally the same. I'll link to that video up there. It's a good math lesson. And if you're somebody that wants to understand the why behind things and the mix rates and the math, it'll be really good education for you. So I'll link that up there in the eye and down in the description. So for right now though, the, the, the uh, rate on this, I'm just gonna mix up two gallons because I'm spot spraying. So I don't need to do an entire four gallon backpack here uh, just two gallons will be fine by the way the second thing I'm gonna do is spray this new product for uh, sedges so we'll take a look at that in a minute so our, our application rate here for st. Augustine grass is 6.2 to 8.6 fluid ounces in one to four gallons of water so I'm just gonna use the one gallon rate and I'm gonna just use eight ounces per gallon uh, that's just easier for me to to measure so since I'm doing two gallons I'm gonna need 16 ounces total so let's first get our water. We're gonna fill up halfway with water first. So I've got one gallon of water in here, because remember, I'm only doing a two gallon fill. My rate is eight ounces per gallon, and one gallon of spray mix covers 1,000 square feet. So since I have two gallons, I'm putting in 16 ounces. So shake this up, because it's been sitting for a while. Now you can use, where is it? You could use this. It's got markings on the inside, but with my old eyes, I can't see that. So I have to use these here. Let's see, 16 ounces is right there. Okay, now I'm gonna fill up the rest of the way to the two gallon mark. There we go. You don't need any surfactant with this. Typically when you buy store-bought stuff, if it needs a surfactant, it will be built in. So that's it, you just put it in there, put your tap on, and agitate well. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is turn on the sprayer and cycle it through so I get all the juice through the line here. Okay, now we're good to go. Now I'm using the red fan tip and this is gonna create a finer mist. I'll show you out there when we're spraying weeds, we want a little bit finer mist or a smaller droplet size because we really want this weed control to stick to the weeds so it can absorb in, it's systemic that way. So that's why I use the finer mist tip here. Let's go spray and pray. All right, so here we go, right there. That's day flower. A lot of you guys are dealing with this right now. This definitely takes a couple applications to get it, to get it gone. There's more here, you can know day flower because of those, because of the way the leaves look here. But also you'll find these little purple flowers too. So the thing about day flower is it, it will outcompete the St. Augustine grass, especially here where my St. Augustine is so weak. I mean, my lawn is just torn up, right? You guys remember last week's episode, stuff's tore up everywhere here. So anyway, see I'm going just slow enough to get a good coating on the weeds. Here's another, look at that big old patch. What I was saying is it will outcompete your St. Augustine grass and there will be a huge bare spot here when it dies, which is why it tends to come back because it drops seeds. And even though you kill it, there's a bare patch there when it's gone. So nasty stuff. Definitely gonna take a couple applications. All right, man, my lawn is atrocious over here. I can't believe I'm showing you this. You mean this YouTuber guy has this terrible lawn? Yes, he does. But again, watch the last four or five weeks 
Oh, I got a little large patch coming in here too. I got everything. Watch the last four or five weeks. You'll see why that is. Let's go over here into the nicer Floratam that has not been damaged at all. Again, that's from that. I just haven't mowed since then. Now, there's a lot of sedge in here. You can't see it from this far back angle, but I'll show it to you when we do the next application. For now, we're still spot spraying weeds. Got some weeds around these edges. You can see I've been weed whacking way too close. That's just me getting lazy, and so that allows weeds to invade in these edges. I don't know if you can tell, that's almost all weeds in there. Some dove weed in here, this is all. Now the cold is slowing it way down, but I need to be a little bit more careful with my weed whacking. See here, this is all weeds all around these corners here. Look at this, see that? A little bit of everything in there, some bitter cress, some more spreading dayflower, some more dove weed right there that's all beat up. So lesson learned here, don't get lazy with your weed whacking. I'll show you in another video why that happens. Yeah, it's all these edges. This here, this is artillery fern. I don't know if this is this uh, weed control will kill this. We're gonna see. You can see I had. You can see I had a whole bunch in there. You may not even be able to see all the weeds because the grass is a little thicker over here, but I can see them. Still need, still working on this. I got that one irrigation head fixed over there and it's starting to get better, but I have some more work to do. So that'll probably show up somewhere in a video here. Maybe this one, I don't know. There's weeds all in here. See again, along the edges where I weed whack too close. What happens is I like to weed whack and I do it too fast because I get into a rhythm and I cut way too close. I thought there was some more out here. All right, now down here, this uh, parkway is not irrigated, and I don't know if I'm gonna ever be able to put irrigation in here because I don't feel like digging under the sidewalk, but it's loaded with spurge. Let me show you, you'll see a lot of that this time of year. This stuff has like, got a dark purple color to it, I think because the cold weather made it go a little bit purple. It's usually not quite that dark. There it is on the sidewalk crack too. A lot of it here. You can see if you back up, you can see the dark spots, that's the spurge. So it's pretty much covered this corner here. There's garden spurge and spotted spurge. This is garden spurge, but they both look very, very similar. Now, while you're here, you'll see I have some spurge in the cracks. Go ahead and spray it. This works just fine. All right, let's go over to the zoysia. Also suffering 
because I sprayed over here to kill Bermuda. And so that brown you see is dead Bermuda, but there's some weeds here again around the edges. Yeah, there's a lot of bitter cress right here. See that? That's all bitter cress. Back here we got some dollar weed, some Francis dollar weed. Right there, dollar weed. See, I got all the same weeds you guys do. I got a lot of the dollar weed back here. This was flooded for a good part of this year. And so it allowed the dollar weed to come in and the other weeds here. Okay, here we are, this is a palm right here. And what you're seeing here, I'll just ID this for you. Well, that's, that's common Bermuda grass right there. Look at that. This is oxalis right here, or called wood sorrel. And the weed control that I'm using will kill it very easily. However, I don't spray that image for southern, image for southern lawns. I don't spray that around trees or shrubs. The reason why is I don't know how far into the soil it's gonna get, because the roots of this tree are just right underneath here. That's why this is all popping up. There's roots under there. And some weed controls will get down and hit the roots. I would use Roundup here though, because Roundup doesn't translocate. Roundup pretty much stays where it is. And as soon as it hits any amount of soil, it binds with that soil and it won't go down into the roots. So if you're gonna use the image for Southern lawns, you can use it for crack and crevice in your driveway, but I wouldn't spray it around trees and shrubs. Again, just cause I don't know the volatility. Also, here's uh, another one of those artillery ferns, which Roundup or glyphosate, Glyphosate will not kill this. And by the way, when I say Roundup, I mean glyphosate. There's a lot of formulations of Roundup. I'll link to a video up there that talks about that. But glyphosate will not kill this artillery fern. So I mostly hand pick it. But we got a lot of wood sorrel up in there. So lots of weed ID for you guys today. Now, another weed control I used is a new one, and it's from PBI Gordon, and it's designed to kill Kalinga, which is what we mostly face here in Florida, but pretty much all sedges. All right, so reading the label here, we can see that our application rate is 1.2 to 1.7 ounces per thousand square feet, and you can reapply after 30 days. So we'll just go with the max rate of 1.7 ounces per thousand. I'm gonna do three gallons because I have about 3,000 square feet that I'm gonna spray that's just riddled with sedges. So three times one is three, Plus, I gotta do. I gotta use my calculator for this. One point seven times three. Okay, Google, what is one point seven times three? Five point one. So basically, I need five ounces of this into my three gallons, and we'll be good to go. You'll see there's a little bit left in the bottom there that I didn't use up. That's okay. These can be mixed together. And in fact, if you wanted to do a blanket application of this with this, you could. You could mix these two together. I just didn't do that because I don't need to blanket spray the entire lawn. But the area that I am going to blanket spray has is where the uh, floor tam is and I've got, I've got sedge Kalinga throughout. So five ounces into three gallons of water and then we can blanket spray. So I'm going to fill the sprayer halfway with water first. So in this case, since we're doing a three gallon fill, I'm going to put in a gallon and a half in the bottom. And there is again some of this image left in the bottom, like just a small amount. That won't hurt anything. It's safe for the lawn to spot spray. It's gonna be safe in this blanket spray. So that's part of what we call rinsate management. Actually, if you want some more information on that, I just did a video on how to clean and winterize your yard mastery sprayer, which you could use that information for any sprayer. But I talk a little bit about rinsate. If you wanna know what rinsate is, it's something that professionals have to deal with on a much larger scale than we do. But as far as I'm dealing with rinsate, I just make sure that whatever's left in the bottom each time I just fill on top of it for the next application. And since it was safe for the lawn at the previous application, it's safe for the lawn in this application. So anyway, don't mean to confuse you, but it is what it is. Terrible.
So before I spray, I'll just show you what the Kalinga is. It's these thin little blades here. That's Kalinga. The reason it's so tough to, to control is because my Saint, your, it, the reason it's so tough to control is because St. Augustine in general is so thick. And so it's just hard to coat those little tiny leaves there or blades or whatever those are, stalks. You know, now you'll know too, you'll see these little star seeds on top. Now I, I haven't cut in over a week. It's just, this grass isn't growing. So normally you'd see more of those little seed stalks, but if you can look through there, all those little thin wispy blades, those are all Kalinga. And it's all throughout here. Most of you that have it don't even know, you just think it's grass. Cause it, when it gets really thick, it kind of looks like grass, but anyway, we're gonna give this a shot. All right, I hope this wind isn't gonna be so bad. So take a look right there. That used to be a giant patch of dayflower. And now it's completely dead and zorched. That's what's left. So this image for Southern Lawns does a really good job on the dayflower, but you can see now it's a big thin spot in here because like I mentioned, it will outcompete the St. Augustine. It literally chokes it out. So, but I got really good control on it this time. However, if you look down in here, see how there's a little green still there? That means it's gonna regrow. It's probably dropped a bunch of seeds too, but it's just such a thick weed. It's really tough to kill. And like I said, it leaves these bare spots. So there's another patch right here. Look at that one. So that was all day flower right there and now it's just all dead. But again, if you look in here, get in close, you'll see there's some green still on the stems, which means it can regrow. See that? So you just gotta keep an eye on it. And now you see there's like no St. Augustine grass in there. So that's the thing about dayflower. It's just such a tough weed, but it's definitely mostly dead. So good results there. This here was some alligator weed. I actually took pictures of this. I'll give you the date. So I had like an interim shot a few days after the app, but it did a really good job on that. I've heard people say this is really tough to get rid of, but it was a pretty decent little patch of it crawling in this thin spot. And it's mostly completely dead. Little green though, see that? This is the thing about the weeds in Florida. They got tubers and rhizomes and all kinds of stuff. So while you kill an area of, a, kill an area of it over here, there's another area over here that can come back and regrow. So, gotta be vigilant. Probably gonna need another application soon. See here on the corner, I got decent control. But as you move down here, there's a lot left still. It's not dead on the edges here, so I must have walked too fast. I sprayed heavy enough on that corner because there was a big concentration there. But see, as you get down here, I got no control at all. So I just, I walked too fast. I needed to slow down a little bit. So lesson learned there. Back here, this is where all of the dollar weed was. And it's almost completely gone. It was really heavy in through here, all in through here. And I don't see very much at all. So it did a really good job on that. A Little bit here, a little bit left but for the most part, it's zorched. So we got a few weeds left in here, still struggling. So it's gonna need another spray, but did a good job on all that dollar weed that was really thick in through here. I can hardly even find any dead stuff. There, there's some dead stuff there. Yeah, see, there you can see some. Oh, that's a rock. <laughs> Never mind, those are rocks, but yeah, did a great job. 
Okay, so now for that Archon, and if it's killing the Kalinga, it's hard to tell, to be honest with you, because while some of it's damaged, the lawn, nothing is growing right now just because of how cool it's been. So, yeah, I think that might be some dead Kalinga right there. You know, there's a few tufts in here, but it's just hard to tell what's what. So I think what I'm gonna have to do, I know what I'm gonna have to do, is I'll have to do some further testing on it when we get more into next year. See, here's, here's some here. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to do more testing next year and find a really thick patch of it and isolate it and spray it that way. Because the Kalinga looks so much like grass, it's just hard to tell. And, and a lot of my grass right now is kind of going yellow from the cold and things. So I'm sorry that this wasn't the best test. This time of year is obviously not the best time to do weed control testing. So uh, stay tuned to the spring for a little bit more on that. All right, y'all, so that's everything I got for you. It's super gloomy here. We're finally getting some rain. We're in a drought here on the West Coast, so we really need this. But again, probably not the best time of year for me to show you a video on weed control. It's a great time of year to kill the weeds, but not the best time to uh, show it to you on video here. So just know, Image for Southern Lawns, it's an incredible weed control available over the counter, something you can use eight ounces per gallon, 1,000 square foot of coverage or spot spray. I encourage you to get out and keep those weeds out because the fact that our lawns are growing slow right now, it means that the weeds have opportunity to come in. So it's even more important to stay on top of them this time of year. With that, I'm Alan Hain, The Lawn Care Nut. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the lawn.